In today's video, our love and attention to horror comics continues as we take a look at some of my favorite horror omnibuses in my collection. Marvel horror, but also what constitutes probably some of the best horror comics ever published, the EC Comics. Right here, right now, coming at you. So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you definitely know that I am a huge fan of horror comics and especially classic horror comics. Um, I just love classic horror comics because I feel all the uh, modern day uh, imagery that we associate with Halloween comes from these uh, early horror comics, um, like Tales from the Crypt. I honestly think EC Comics is the comic book company that made Halloween what it is today for us. So clearly the uh, first omnibus that I would like to share with you today is uh, Tales from the Crypt Volume 1. Uh, I'm going to go through all of these one by one. Very excited to show these to you. So uh, yeah, Tales from the Crypt Volume 1. Um, as you can see here, it says um, these are now printed by Dark Horse. The original um, archive editions of the Tales from the Crypt and all other EC Comics uh, titles were originally published by Gemstone Publishing, uh, but uh, now EC has uh, taken over. If you're looking for the original Gemstone um, editions, those are going to be a little bit more expensive and the, the print runs are very limited for these. Uh, once once they go out of print, they do get rather expensive. Hopefully you could still uh, pick some of these up. So I'll just kind of uh, open this up and show these to you. These these are just beautiful, beautiful editions. Love, it's, they're high, high quality paper, uh, just really nice background information. Just, uh, just beautiful. Uh, and for those of you that are really hardcore horror comic fans, you'll know that uh, Tales from the Crypt originally was called uh, the the Crypt of Terror um, for the longest time. And uh, this is the this is probably uh, the first time I think that you see the like this new style of uh, having um, kind of like a host for the comic book. And uh, these these stories are just great. They always have these uh, just desserts endings uh, where the the bad person in the story gets their uh, comeuppance. The other thing I like uh, a lot about these um, these these new um, archive editions is that they feature like all of the like these little short stories, and then at the end they have like letters, pages, and things like that, uh, and they have some of the original ads too, which is really uh, really cool. So just really really awesome stories. You know how all of these are going to end. It's just really kind of cool to see how uh, each character. Uh, gets their uh, gets what they're what they're what's coming to them right so just just great gotta love that early crypt keeper that definitely looks nothing like uh, what he looks like today so I'll just kind of flip through these uh, each one of these um, editions I believe comes with a uh, six six issues um, yeah so and as you know um, Eventually, the title changes to Tales from the Crypt, but they don't do any renumbering. I guess back in the day, it cost money to um, for distribution to start over again, so they just kind of changed the name and kept the numbering. Um, more of these ads, just just awesome. So um, love this cover, and this is the cover that's on the front of the book. Like I said, uh, these are let's see, it collects. Uh, 17 to 19 so um oh sorry no yeah you get about six yeah six six issues with each one of these uh prices vary um i i, I can tell you i've never really spent uh that amount of money uh, on these books uh they usually do go on sale sometimes so hopefully um now they uh, have not gone up to their uh, suggested MSRP. Tales from the Crypt Volume 2, and this uh, we have another six issues. Forgot to mention in the other uh, book, uh, usually the forewords in all these books are done by someone notable. Um, this is by Joe Dante, haha, <laughs> love that name, eh? Uh, and in the previous book, uh, the foreword was by John Car Carpenter, who is a notable uh, horror uh, director. Whoops. So um, 
I just love this art by Al Feldstein. This is actually uh, one of the most notable Tales from the Crypt uh, covers. And believe it or not, this is the first Tales from the Crypt archive edition that I, that I ever owned. And um, you can see here that this is uh, an original uh, gemstone um, edition of the, uh, the, the EC archives. And uh, these are no longer in print anymore. Uh, I believe Dark Horse though is still printing these. So if you wanna pick them up, you definitely can. Uh, I will provide links in the description uh, for any of the, the books that you are going to be seeing today. Just, this is just marvelous. I, I, I love, love the art in, the, in this book and uh, in the, in these Tales from the Crypt books. Uh, I really feel that the, the art is really, really ahead of its time. Just really awesome to show you some of the covers here. Like they're so gruesome. Uh, like I, I can't imagine what kids were thinking when they were reading this back in the fifties. Uh, just, you know, like for today, by today's standards, like this, uh, this kind of stuff here, this kind of stuff here is not really <laughs> a big deal, but back then I can imagine it being, um, being a big deal, especially in the uh, happy-go-lucky 1950s, right? Where everything was perfect and white picket fence. Yeah, it's really, really, really awesome. Just, uh, just love these books. Uh, I love these stories. They're just uh, always, always a joy to read. Um, now this month, I actually haven't been uh, reading these as much. I try to read um, at least a few stories uh, every, every so often, but I, I think before Halloween and the Halloween spooky season is done, I'm going to have to check out some more of these. <laughs> so yeah, look at that cover. Ooh, I'm telling you, if you're claustrophobic, being buried alive has to be one of your worst fears. I think being buried alive is probably anybody's fear. I just can't imagine. That's just, that's just horrible. <laughs> Tales from the Crypt volume three and this is um another uh gemstone edition of these uh which is out of print this is actually the second uh tales from the crypt um archive edition that i have ever owned for some reason i don't know what it is i think the art on this cover is really well done however this is probably my least favorite tales from the crypt cover i don't know why the art is just great uh, it's by Jack Davis. Jack Davis is a very, very well-known uh, artist uh, from the uh, EC era. But uh, I don't know, just wasn't my favorite. What do you think of this cover? Let me know in the comments. Uh, forward in this book is by Bob Overstreet. And we all know who Overstreet is. He's in charge of the, or he's responsible for that whole Overstreet price guide that we all, I, I don't want to say no one love because I think most of us despise it because, because of that damn guide and eBay like, prices of all of our favorite comics are horribly inflated. <laughs> um, so yeah, there, there's Bob Overstreet as a child. <laughs> uh, just great, great covers. Love, love this, love this stuff. Just kind of flip through these. I'll try to go through these a little quicker because there, there are quite a few more. <laughs> Look at that cover. That's a cool cover. That should have been used as the, uh, as the cover of this whole edition. These stories are just amazing, amazing. Uh, each issue of Tales from the Crypt usually came with four stories or uh, yarns as the uh, hosts of these books uh, like to call them. And uh, in all of these, so uh, every single EC horror book had a host. So in Tales from the Crypt, obviously it was the Crypt Keeper, but then you would have um, the Old Witch and the Vault Keeper that would also guest star in these books. And uh, people just really started uh, to love these these uh, these hosts. See, like there's the there's the Vault Keeper uh, introducing this yarn, and uh, you know. In watching interviews with uh, William Gaines, who was the, the publisher, and the, that's actually William Gaines right there. William Gaines, there's uh, Al, Al Feldstein. <laughs> um, that, that, that's not actually them, but I think they're, that they were meant, these characters were meant to look like them. Uh, really, really kind of funny. But in watching uh, interviews with them, um, they said that they introduced these types of um, hosts to just kind of cut a little bit of the tension because a lot of these stories were 
pretty scary for kids, you know. So uh, they had these uh, these hosts kind of cut the tension a little bit because they they used all of these uh, horrible puns and and <laughs> and uh, they often made jokes about what was happening in the story. So it was actually kind of humorous. And uh, Al Feldstein himself said he got the idea from uh, love these covers here. Um, Al Feldstein said he got these this the idea to have hosts from uh, old horror radio shows from the 1930s because uh, all of those radio shows like uh, Lights Out and uh, Inner Sanctum they all had hosts to introduce the the stories. And here we have Tales from the Crypt Volume Four and Tales from the Crypt Volume Five. And I'm not going to open these up because, uh, funny enough, they are still in the shrink wrap. <laughs> Uh, I bought these a long time ago, and I just haven't had the chance to uh, to read them yet or take them out of the shrink wrap. So I think I might have to open this uh, this volume four uh, to read some stories before Halloween. Ooh, just get me in this in the in the mood, get me in the spirit. Uh, and these are the Dark Horse editions. So these are the newer editions. Um, again, I'll try to post uh, links to all of these products in the description so you can pick them up. I highly, 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 I don't care which ones you get. I don't care if you get them out of order, you just buy one of these. Um, they're so worth the money. Uh, the, the, the paper is just such such high quality paper um, and you get a lot of extra freebies and the, and the price is pretty decent for these, uh, these archive editions. So definitely would recommend um, picking these up here. I'll give you a better look at uh, volume five there with the vampire cover absolutely love it uh but uh yeah these are just just great pick them up i don't care which ones you get but uh tales from the crypt they are just probably the best horror comics ever published um in all of of history so you got to pick them up and i just noticed here um bruce campbell did the four forward in this uh this book i i love bruce campbell he's actually an actor from michigan um and he was a uh he was in he was in Hercules um, and the Legendary Z Journeys and Xena, and he also made uh, quite a few cameo appearances in the um, Sam Raimi uh, Spider Man with uh, with Tobey Maguire. So um, yeah, Bruce Campbell's awesome. But anyway, yeah, definitely try to pick these up. Definitely a lot more um, economical and uh, worth the money to get these than actually try to track down the individual issues, the original issues uh, of the Tales from the Crypt, because the Tales from the Crypt issues are just really expensive and even if they're not really a key issue for any reason they're just super super expensive for the price of one tales one unknown tales from the crypt book you'd probably get two or three of these so uh definitely keep that in mind i'm gonna go through the next few books uh just a little quickly um these are uh shock suspense stories these technically are not horror books uh these are actually books the whole the whole purpose of the shock suspense stories was to teach some sort of moral lesson they were they were morality tales but um just because they were morality tales they, they weren't preachy uh and they definitely were very entertaining this one has a forward by steven spielberg actually i actually really like reading the forewords uh because all of these notable successful people were influenced by these books back in the day like people don't understand like and this was during a time when when comic books were uh there was a witch hunt against comic books due to frederick Bortham, and people don't understand how many successful notable people nowadays were influenced by these books and just the comic book medium in general which i think is just amazing uh, but the reason why i wanted to show you these uh is because uh in these in these books, uh, they, they weren't all just morality tales. In the shock suspense story, the, the first tale was usually always, um, was usually, okay, sorry, it wasn't always a uh, morality tale, but uh, you would get, in these books, you would get a crime suspense story, so a crime story. Then you would get um, uh, some sort of science fiction story. Then you would get an, uh, your actual shock story. And then they would usually end with a horror story. So uh, this book here was actually a gateway for many kids back in the day into getting into some of EC's other books because EC was known for their horror books, 
but uh, they also published science fiction books. They published war books. They published uh, shock. They published crime. Uh, and I have some of those which I'm going to show you. Um, but I just kind of wanted to go through these very quickly because, again, they're not really horror books, but uh, they do have horror stories in them. Um, I love this book because it's just kind of like a sampler of all that the EC company had to offer. So there's your shock. Just love this art, like just flipping through these. I mean, you, sometimes you don't even have to read them, you just the art. And they're, they're science fiction stories. Their science fiction stories were really cool. I really liked them. They weren't, um, their science fiction stories weren't very, uh, you know, they, they're, they're, they're science fiction, sorry, their science fiction books rather, didn't sell as great as the other ones, but uh, they're still considered cult classics nowadays. And speaking of science fiction comics, uh, this is the only EC Comics archive edition I have of one of their uh, science fiction books. They had Weird Science, uh, and then they had another one. Uh, the name slips my mind too, but I think they had two science fiction books. Uh, again, their science fiction books did not sell as well as, as their other ones, but they're still very, very good. Um, still have that EC flavor to them and uh, they're still today considered cult classics in the science fiction genre. So much so that the foreword was done by none other than George Lucas for this book. Um, wow, like, you know, uh, just incredible that books like this, you know, influenced even like George Lucas, the, uh, the creator of one of the most beloved film franchises in cinematic history. Uh, these are the, uh, the Dark Horse ones. And of course, I still have this one in a shrink wrap. Haven't, haven't had the chance to, uh, check this one out uh yet but um i'm excited to dive into this uh when when i get in there i started collecting some of these weird science ones but uh i, I stopped for some reason i don't know i think it's because i still have a bunch of these in the shrink wrap so <laughs> uh, and then here i have uh crime suspense stories and this one is uh the gemstone edition and the crime suspense stories are just just great uh love love their crime suspense stories. I think my second favorite um, EC stories next to uh, Tales from the Crypt come from crime suspense stories. Uh, a lot of these two, uh, they were kind of, love triangles were really big in their, um, in their crime suspense stories. And I'm pretty sure that all the books, yeah, all of the books, or sorry, all the stories in, uh, in the crime suspense stories book were crime stories. So. Uh, this was just one, just a completely dedicated crime book. I think you would get a horror story once in a while, but uh, yeah, see so you would. Oh no, no, that's an ad. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you would. I think you would get a horror story once in a while. But uh, these crime stories actually overlapped a little bit with their horror books. Uh, just a lot of the themes and what would happen in these books sometimes could be considered. Um, horror so uh, really really cool like even look look at that that guy's a creepy looking guy um just awesome and this is the last ec archive book that i have uh that i'm going to be showing you in this video and this is the vault of horror i only have one archive edition of ec's other horror title that's the halt vault of horror um there was another horror book that ec published called the haunt of fear um, and I don't have any archive editions of The Haunt of Fear, but uh, yeah, I started collecting these two, but as those of you that collect um, archive editions and omni omnibuses know, uh, it can get rather expensive collecting these, so I kind of have to do it a little bit at a time, but uh, yeah, Vault of Horror, great book. I, I would say they're just, just as great as um, Tales from the Crypt. Had all the same writers, all the same artists. Johnny Craig was another uh, big artist uh, during the EC era. Um, he was really known for having these characters with these big sweating problems. I'll see if I can find a picture in here but uh, at some point. But uh, yeah, just great, great art. And it really kind of, all the art in these books really, really added to the to the mood and the, uh, the spooky feeling you would get from these. Forward in this book done by R.L. Stein, like just holy crap. Like uh, R.L. Stein was a big part of my childhood. I, I read Goosebumps books like, like crazy. When I was a kid, and he's probably one of the most successful uh, juvenile fiction authors uh, of all time. And he 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 himself uh, just writes about how much uh, EC Comics were part of his childhood, and, and he talks about how 
how he was inspired to be a horror writer or uh, or a child child or uh, juvenile horror um, author because of these books. Uh, they just influenced him so much. Actually, they, uh, they did a documentary on EC Comics uh, many years back, and R.L. Stein actually did make an appearance in it. Um, just really, really great, great covers. All this stuff, and of course, we have the um, the Vault Keeper, who is the host of this book. But that does not stop some of the other hosts. I think. Let's see. Go to the next story. Does the Vault Keeper host all of these? I don't remember. Oh, maybe he does. Sometimes my memory of these books kind of overlaps a little bit. But look, just look at these. Look at the, look at this art. Very, very ahead of its time, I think. Like just great, great art. And the last book that I'm showing you in this uh, collection video is this Marvel Horror Omnibus, which just came out uh, recently. I think it was just within the last year. I was very excited when I found this uh, because as you know, I'm a huge horror fan. Uh, but also I do really love Marvel Horror. Um, I think the EC books are my favorite, but uh, close second definitely would be the, uh, the Marvel Horror books. Uh, if you watched the uh, last video, the video that we posted last week, um, showing you some of the individual issues of my horror comic book collection, you'll know that they are mostly all Bronze Age Marvel horror comics. I just love Bronze Age Marvel, but I also love Bronze Age Marvel horror. So I was so stoked when uh, I, I saw this. And um, you got some of these books or some of these uh stories are black and white because uh, marvel marvel did really well with a lot of horror books um back back in the day uh, i think you know dc has uh, of course has an incredible um tradition with respect to horror books as well uh, but for me I, I i prefer the marvel horror books as well uh just just great some of these are black and white because they were originally published in black and white uh, but others are um, are also colored. So just a really nice collection. I am going to be doing a full review uh, on this Marvel Horror uh, Omnibus uh, in, in the next video. So uh, keep a lookout uh, before Halloween. This The review on this book will uh, definitely be posted. So I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, probably a little bit of a longer video, but... Uh, Hope you enjoyed it nevertheless. And uh, let me know in the comments if you have any of these or you plan to pick any of these up. Uh, again, any of the books that you have seen in this video today, if you're interested in picking, picking them up, link is in the description. So this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.